Konnichiwa! Today, we are going to explain how Japanese culture changed through Chinese and Korean influences, including Buddhism and Confucianism, as shown in the constitution of Shotoku and the adoption of the Chinese writing system. First, let's describe Japan's geography. It is mountainous, full of mountain ranges. This is similar in a lot of ways to other Pacific islands or archipelagos like Hawaii um, or the Philippines. And so in places like this, you know, this is newer land. It's been formed volcanically in the ocean, meaning that there are high mountain peaks and mountain ranges kind of scattered throughout the archipelago of Japan. So this caused the ancient populations there to establish small clan-based communities. Since it's kind of difficult to travel around Japan, a lot of people just kind of found communities near the oceans um, to start up rice farms. And while Rome and China were falling into periods of division and chaos, these small clans inhabited their small rice farms, but there was no real national unity among the clans. They were all just kind of spread out, not really centralized or tied together with their culture. Um, in a lot of cases, they had different languages, different lifestyles, and so on. But each clan did believe that they had a special Shintoist connection with local nature spirits called Kami. So after a few hundred years of this, the most powerful family started the Yamato period, which lasted from 552 to 710. And the hundreds of scattered clans were finally unified by this Yamato family. And the leaders of the family claimed to be related to or descended from the sun goddess, which made them powerful political and religious leaders. Over on the side here, you can see a painting of the sun goddess, Amaterasu, and she was one of the highly important deities in Japanese mythology and in Shinto beliefs. So my question to you is, how might the Yamato's religious claim have given them more power? How might being related to the sun goddess, this important deity, have increased their power, you know, their political power in the eyes of the people? So the Yamato family began imitating the Tang family in China. So just remember, guys, that Japan and China are separated by the East Sea or the Sea of Japan. But ideas flowed across that body of water from China to Japan. Interest in China increased as Korean monks spread knowledge of Buddhism to Japan. And eventually the Yamato leader, Prince Shotoku, adopted Buddhism himself. He converted uh, to Buddhism, and he sent a small group of young nobles to learn more about the Chinese way of life. Since China had spread Buddhism to Korea, and Korea spread Buddhism to Japan, Prince Shotoku kind of wanted to cut out the middleman. He wanted to go directly to the source. He wanted to find out more about Chinese culture directly from them and from the Tang family. And after these nobles returned, they reported about all of the Tang Dynasty ways of life, and China became obsessed with their government, with their Buddhism, their writing system, their pagoda-style architecture, um, tea drinking, and the lifestyle of the Tang Dynasty. And you can see that in the capital cities here. The first ever Japanese national capital city was Nara which was the capital city of the Yamato family. And you can see there are some similarities here, this grid system that they established, very, very similar to the Tang capital over in China. And so this is, you know, evidence that the Yamato family was trying to imitate what they saw in China during that time period. Constitution of 17 Articles. This was written in 604 CE, and sometimes it's called the Constitution of Shotoku because Prince Shotoku Taishi created this document, and it was meant to encourage leaders to behave like fair and moral leaders. So, students, does this remind you of another person or document? Does the Constitution of 17 Articles recall any memories of maybe another scholar or another document 
that was meant to achieve the same goals. Why do you suppose that Shotoku Taishi might have been inspired to write this document? Taika Reform, 645 CE. After Prince Shotoku died, Japan continued to adopt Chinese traditions. So even though he started, you know, this imitation of China, it continued on after his death. And um, the leaders that followed him passed a series of laws that are sometimes called the Taika Reforms or the Taika Reform, which basically just means change. And it allowed the emperor of Japan to collect taxes from the citizens, control the land, actually develop the land as the emperor sees fit, you know, to build roads or to build walls and government buildings or to establish government farms, things like that. And finally, it allowed the emperor to appoint clan leaders to official government positions based on skill. And so this is similar in a lot of ways to like the civil service system that we saw in the Tang Dynasty during that time period and eventually the Song Dynasty. Nationalism. After the 800s, Japan began to drift away from Chinese tradition and create its own cultural identity. Clan leaders began inheriting government jobs from their fathers instead of earning those positions through tests of skill. Artists began painting, writing poetry, and sculpting in a unique Japanese style. So during this time period, clothing styles really changed, food, language, architecture. It all started to look a little bit more distinctly Japanese instead of simply imitating the Tang Dynasty during that time period. And since they're both foreign countries to many of us, right, it may be hard to tell the differences. But, you know, just be aware that China and Japan um, now see themselves as being completely distinctive of one another. Even though Japan kind of takes its origins or its roots from China, it has really developed its own unique um, sense of national identity. So let's try to... Uh, sort of get into that headspace a little bit. What things do you associate with being an American? Do you think America has imitated other cultures in the past like Japan did? How do you think our identity has changed over the centuries? Do you think that maybe our cultural identity has morphed or transformed, you know, over the centuries that America has been a country? Guys, today we explained how Japanese culture changed through Chinese and Korea, uh, Korean influences, including Buddhism and Confucianism, as shown in the Constitution of Shotoku and the adoption of the Chinese writing system. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next time.